wake-up service is courtesy of the Coast Watch. The journey across Princess Charlotte Bay takes them high above the tropical rivers that snake out through the salt flats. The sheer isolation of the area has kept it safe from the damaging hand of man. The main population here is wild pigs, dingoes and crocodiles. And the odd fishing party. But a storm is brewing. If the planes get caught in the rain, their wooden propellers will shatter. The Cape is notorious for bad weather. Forty years ago, an entire squadron of American warplanes was downed in a tropical storm. The only shelter within range where they can hope to get fuel is Silver Plains, an 1,100 square mile cattle station just north of Princess Charlotte Bay. Looks like we got here just in time. I think that storm could break. It could be the start of the wet season. Silver Plains is one of the only places where the Australian outback actually touches the coast. The characters are straight out of the Australian legend. Hi. There you go. Hayden Wicks. Good day, The manager has no problem persuading these visitors to stay the night. How can you organise? Here there are no fences. The cattle are half wild and see a stockman only about once a year. You've got everything you could possibly want in life. The gentleness of nature and the ruggedness of nature. You've got the dry season and the incredible wet that arrives. And also you've got this satisfaction of knowing that you've done it because out here no one else will do it for you charge in the future. Well, you can get hurt. How bad? Killed. Killed. Yeah, you can get your guts let out. The next morning the storm has passed, but the wet could come any day, and there is still a long way to go. Today they're heading for Lockhart River, nearly 100 miles north, and progress is slow against the strengthening headwinds. I don't think we're going to make the build up. I think we're going to have to do something else while this wind's so strong. I think we're getting something like 15 knots on the nerves now. Have you noticed the tide coming in pretty rapidly? Not enough hard sand for us to land. Oh, well, I think they're not going to have landing to go this time. Fuel is
is becoming critical. The beach is no good for landings, and the only alternative, the mud flats, are disappearing into the scrub. There's normally some mud flats up at the end of the river, so I'll see what I can find. With more mangroves looming up, it's time to find a place to set down and wait for the tide to go out. This is real, real tiger country in here, Arnold. It's not particularly comfortable at all. Gotta get out of here, Aiden. Well, Look how short it is. That's the smallest we've ever landed in. Oh. Tell you what, isn't it marvelous how you can do a good landing when you're really forced to do it? Oh, I can land okay. I don't know why you're smiling. I'm not happy. Look at it. I think if we step it out, if we fire 60 paces, and if we double that, you sound confident. I can't. I'm not. But did you notice your landing there? You came in with your tail down. Oh, yeah. First try, remember? I can me get, too. I can get in tight places, but getting out worries me. Look, we've got all that tree area to get over. Rock of ages left for me. I hope I can miss that tree. The hotter it is up here, uh, the lower density of the air right just makes it much, much harder to get airborne. We might, mm. might be able to machete that down. Yeah. Okay. The aircraft yeah, takes 60 paces to get airborne. So I'm going to double that, having 120 paces, and that should clear the mangroves at the far end of the field. one snap of the jaws. He's there, there. I saw an enormous crocodile. It was bigger than the aeroplane. I thought it was a shark until I realized that it was swimming differently to a shark. These amazing creatures, living dinosaurs, have survived by stealth. They can reduce their heart rate to one beat a minute, but will strike like lightning at any unwary creature. In Australia, they've cheated hunters by taking to the most remote rivers in the tropical north and are now protected by law. How much fuel have you actually got left? Well, I've probably got about 10, 15 minutes as my maximum flying time. When we break out down here, we'll turn around and pick up a beach again, Arnold. This is, uh, it's just a little scary.
Were you in the vehicle? Yeah. That's right, yeah. Did you get a fright? We just couldn't believe our eyes. We used to the spotter paint. I just can't believe that out of... We fly through mangroves and crocodile infested country and four people turn up. <laughs> we heard you. We were in the bloody rainforest when we heard you. No crocodiles? Oh, oh yeah. Did you see, you the, see tracks? the tracks down there? No, we tried We not have to look. a track. <laughs> 20 foot. Oh, right. Just grooves out of the sand like that, yeah, just down at the creek mouth. And here. Well, that's a really big croc. You can see. See where he's come out of the lagoon there and he's eaten scraped the dirt. The sand and the, underneath the water, you can right. still see the mark under uh, the water. Yeah. So he's pretty heavy. Uh, but I haven't seen any track going back, so I don't know whether he's still in the water or whether he's come back up the creek. At high tide, these sort of estuaries are full of fish, and they get in there and they chop around with their tail. It's, it's slaughter, especially at night. It, the water just boils with big fish chasing little fish, and yeah, you wouldn't want to stick your tail in there. And they build their nests up along these creeks, and they'll soon be mating and breeding. And I said to Sid, oh, you can't net today. There's that croc there, he's seen us. No, he said, we'll be right. The croc's frightened, he's gone away. He said, the mullet are there, I'm going to get them. No worries at all. Up there in the far north Queensland, there is no one to save you. You do it all yourself and you learn about survival and it becomes your prime instinct, whether you're walking along a beach or you fly in an aeroplane. But the biggest killers in Queensland waters and not the crocodiles, or even the sharks, but an innocuous looking jellyfish, commonly known as the box jellyfish. This sting on the arm is a lucky escape, for these marine stingers can paralyze their victims within minutes. It's like a real burning sensation, tingle right through your body for a while. But for the pilots, survival means enough fuel to get to Lockhart River. Many of the Cape York Aborigines now live in the Lockhart River community. The local airstrip Iron Range was built by the Americans during the dark days of World War II and was used for operations against the Japanese. legacy lingers on. Even the aircraft operating today from Iron Range are original World War II DC-3s, the old Goonie birds. At this peaceful little outpost, it's hard to imagine the strange and savage world it was just 40 years ago. Remember Manila, Hong Kong, Nanking, and a few others, Mr. Nippon? You'd better duck. Shows over, boys, and the ships are heading home. It is a cracker show from beginning to end. When it comes to a scrap, we Aussies don't want any better coppers than you Yanks. We're tickled to death to know that you're right behind us. Oh, yeah, Blackjack? With you, boy, not behind you. a kid about 10 or 11 and I'd say a cobra or a fairy battle it's hard to tell whether it's what American World War II plane World, World War II I right. but this is upside down whether or not the guy came in and flipped when he hit the water and we know all about that yeah but I'd say he might have done a force landing and hit the nose wheel and then just flipped the whole thing the ultralights fly on powered by their Japanese motors guided by Japanese instruments, timed by Japanese watches, until they pass Turtle Head Island, the last outpost of the cultured pearl industry in Australia. And it's all Japanese. 
For more than a century, pearling luggers worked these waters in search of treasure. It was one of the most romantic and bizarre industries the world has seen. Only one or two luggers remain. Going along the beaches and coming to a headland and finding another beach to fly along and around another headland and another beach would appear. It just went on and on and on. And uh, your mind wanders off and uh, it can become a, a danger. And every time we'd stop, it'd be a mouthful of water, more fuel and go. Because we really were busting a gut that day to get to the top of Australia. Let's go now and have a look at it. Uh, take a bit of a break for a while. I'm, I'm very tired. Bloody fatigue. Worn out. Feet. <laughs> that last leg, isn't it? 35 miles of yes. more terror than we've had today. <laughs> that one thing can hurt you. There was the combination of soft sand, narrow beach, crosswind, and my fatigue. In the end, fatigue will win. There's nothing that can beat fatigue except a, a good sleep. Oh, that was a bit of a close one, Amy. Well, <laughs> I, I sat there with water coming all around me, Arnold, and I thought, my goodness me. But if you continued on, you would have went in. I'm glad you I backed off. Terribly, did. terribly pleased I haven't got a broken propeller. Yeah. <sighs> Propellers are replaceable, engines are the problem. Oh, I thought <laughs> you were talking about me. <laughs> I'm going to try it again okay. and uh, don't do what I did. <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> well, the movie will show how close you were to crashing it. Crashing it. Crashing it. Cape York is a graveyard of dreams. This was once the thriving settlement of Somerset, established in 1865 as a Singapore of the South. Today, it's barely a memory. It never was a good anchorage because of the strong tide. In the early part of this century, Somerset where the greatest island begins, where the dividing range rises to the sea, where Captain Cook emerged from the labyrinth, hoisted the Union Jack, and laid claim to the continent on behalf of King George of England. But for two weary aviators, its journey's end. <laughs> it's delightful to, to belong with an aircraft your own personal wings. Now I want to put it away and it becomes a thing of the past. And I guess that's what I'll do with it anyway. I had a lack of confidence in my abilities and uh, after uh, the trip was over, I would uh, realised that I was capable of doing it and uh, this trip taught me a lot. Alan and I shared a most unique experience of wilderness, of togetherness, danger, concern. It was sad because that small section of my life was, was finished. What 
I could do was now is my sole person to come up here and and wrap herself around me, just to hold me. Come on, Aunt Laura. Well, Aidan Wicks, this is your life. Come on, man. Here you are, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 uh.